Hey guys, it's Abby from Autumn of Perna, and today I'm going to be telling you my TBR for March. So I don't know about any readathons yet in March and I'm just going to do what I did in February which is kind of do my thing, read as I go and put in stuff for TBRs as I go. We'll see how it ends up. This also isn't going to be my full TBR because for reasons I don't want to mention yet in case it fails um i might be traveling for like four hours eight every single day on a bus and i cannot read on a bus it makes me feel sick so i need audiobooks to pass the time i'm also going to listen to some podcasts because it's quite a long time so i can listen to a lot of different stuff every day uh that's not every day five days a week but yes so straight off leave me some of your favorite audiobooks down below because i need them <coughs> I need them for March for something to do these four hours every day but in terms of my physical TBR let's get going so there's no particular reason that I've chosen these and things may end up getting switched up but I tend to try and stick to like five books on my TBR so we'll see first up I will mention my booktubeathon my booktube rereadathon book so the pick for this month is to read a book either written or set before the year you were born. I was born in 1996, I'm 23, I'll be 24 this year, and I'm going to reread The Seeing Stone by Kevin Crosley Holland. I loved this book when I read it, it's an Arthurian story, so it's set a while ago. My voice is going, I'm sorry. So it's an Arthurian story, so it is definitely set before I was born and I really enjoyed it when I was younger to the point where I have been trying to pick up the second book in like a charity shop or just not full price or from like Amazon or whatever since I read it and I haven't been able to find it, which is really annoying me. And it's a, a book in a trilogy, first book in a trilogy, as I hit myself in the face, and the end pages are a map. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, I remember adoring this when I first read it and I want to read it again and this is a great excuse. I'll go through the books with a reason first. Next up is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I've never read anything from Sabah Tahir, ever. And I've been chatting with, I'll leave her channel down below, but I've been chatting with Caitlin. Uh, she is an author, she's not yet published. I think she's going to be published soon, something like that. But I'll, I've been chatting with her a lot and we're both going to be reading An Ember in the Ashes this month. It's going to be my first ever buddy read. Um, and it's kind of just kind of come about spontaneously, so I'm really excited. So I do this all the time. I remember the second book in that I haven't said what the book's about. So I haven't read this in a while, so I'm checking. It is just like the beginning of the story of Arthur. So his father's friend Merlin gives him a shiny stone and he sees like stories of his namesake, King Arthur, and oh, it's a hundred short chapters. Oh, that's interesting. I haven't read this in years, to the point where it's got dust on it. Oh, okay. So the Arthur that we follow has like a seeing stone, where he looks into the path at, past at his namesake. Interesting. Interesting. An Ember in the Ashes. It's fantasy. I know this much. Uh, our main character is going to go undercover as a slave a slave at the Empire's greatest military academy. And so she's going to learn to fight like a badass and then try and bring down the Empire, I assume. This is all I know. I follow Sabata here on like everything and she's awesome and funny, but I've managed to avoid too much spoilering for this book, which is good. Next up Again, lots of links for me to put in the description this time, but Carrie from Caring for Books gifted me Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, and I've wanted to read it since I heard about it. Of course I have to put it on the TBR. I'm so excited. This is about Mia Caveira. I've heard a lot of people talk about her, and yet have not figured out how to say her last name. This is about a character called Mia. She, this is an adult book, but she is a child, and she learns to be an assassin and, like, be awesome. I'm really excited for that one. Then I'm gonna read Without You There Is No Us by Suki Kim. This is a non-fiction memoir about her time teaching at the North Korean elite 
sons. So like the sons of all the like high up blokes in North Korea. And I think this will be incredibly interesting because she's got a Westerner's point of view. Um, and it should be a quick read as well. It, it's got really small writing but it's also only 300 pages. And lastly, I actually switched out this, I tend to try and put five books in my TBR. It's a good amount for me, it means that I can get through them without freaking out about trying to get through every single book. And then it also lets me pick up other books or like not be mad if I don't read them all. It's just a nice middle amount. And so I actually swapped out, I was going to read Caraval by Stephanie Garber, just because I'm massively behind and I need to read it and it's on my shelves. But I decided instead to read City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. So I read City of Bones, what, like almost two years ago at this point, and I own the entire Mortal Instruments series, the entire Dark Artifices series, and the entire... what is it? What's the other one? I always forget this one. Infernal Devices series. So I own all of the clockworky ones, all of the city ones, and all of the, like, Lady Queen ones. And I read City of Bones. Uh, I only got the last two ones from the Dark Artificer series last month, if you saw my... What's it called again? <laughs> if you saw my Balancing the Books video, um, if not, link in the card somewhere. <laughs> um, so yes, I only got them for me very recently so I thought I should probably at least read one more book into the series. With City of Bones I sped through it, I did find the writing a little childish. I'm hoping that as I go through her books, as they kind of get closer to her current day works, that her writing matures a little because I did speed through City of Bones and found it really fun. Even if I thought it was silly and a bit stupid, I really found it fun. So I'm hoping for at least the same in this one. We'll see. I really hope I don't hate it because I own a lot of her books. <laughs> I don't know why I bought all of these. I got the box set of City of Glass. City of Glass. The... what's it called? The Mortal Instruments box set that up on a shelf up there if you hadn't guessed. I got the Mortal Instruments box set from the works, then I saw the Infernal Devices box set in the works and I was like, mm, may as well, and then I've just kind of been picking up the Dark Artifices series and I'm still one book in. So, and those are all the books that are on my TBR for. In the comments down below, put some sort of emoticon down there if you don't want to comment any words, but if you do want to comment some words, let me know whether you think that Cassandra Clare's writing matures. Let me know audiobooks that I should pick up because I need them. And let me know what you think of the books I'm going to be reading. Tell me whether you've read them, whether you think they sound interesting, just let me know. If you want to see some more from me, my subscribe button is always down below, as well as all the links in the description. Definitely a place you should check out because I'm obviously linking a lot of people down there in this video. And if you want to see some more from me, then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!